So we should probably, um, we, we're just on time. Thank you again, Thea, um, for taking the time to, to share that, that with us. And um, we'll touch on some of the other sources of information. Um, you've mentioned one with the Australian Institute a bit, a bit later in the briefing as well. Um, I'm sorry in advance, I will leave a bit early because I've had, you know, long times on Zoom today. Yeah, sure. And you can only do so much Zoom. <laughs> thanks. Thanks so much, Thea. Um, we're going to now turn to two speakers who are going to um, share some of their personal experiences and also unpack a bit of the why we as, 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 as Christians, if we are Christians, are concerned about this issue and how that motivates us um, to take action on climate change. So we'll now hear first from uh, Reverend Dr Chris Walker on his personal experience of protesting about climate and why he took that step. So over to you, Chris. Okay, thanks, John. My wife, Dill, and I have been concerned about the environment and climate change for many years. <clears throat> this has included being involved in our local bush care group. It means being against the overuse of plastic, which so often ends up in the ocean to the detriment of many fish, birds, and other creatures. We want to see much greater recycling of waste materials rather than send them to landfill. I'm part of an interfaith network concerned about climate change. We've come to recognise that fossil fuels are a major contributor to global warming and we need to move away from our dependence on them to renewable sources of energy. We're convinced by the arguments such as Thea has just presented. When we saw the break, fee, break free of fossil fuels protests being organised against coal in Newcastle in May 2016, we decided to become involved. We wanted to make a stand publicly. Newcastle was chosen because it is the world's biggest coal port, which operates 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Coal is a major export for Australia and one of the main ways we contribute to influencing negatively the climate. This particular protest was one of many at fossil fuel sites across the planet, such as in Germany, the UK, Nigeria, South Africa, the Philippines, Brazil, the USA and Canada, was part of a worldwide protest. The goal was to draw attention to the urgent need to move away from fossil fuels. There was a training day and then the protest in Newcastle. The training day emphasised being respectful and responsible for your actions. It was well organised. The protest organisers said that there would be a flotilla of canoes as well as people on the shore to protest against the coal port. The protest organisers also said that for those willing to risk getting arrested, part of the protest would involve an act of civil disobedience. Dell and I chose to do this. Some 60 or so of us, including Miriam Pepper, went to a railway bridge to block coal trains. We went through a fence to do so, thus trespassing on the Hunter River Bridge to interfere with the train line. We blocked the line by sitting on the rail bridge with our banners against coal. Quite a few police then came and after some time asked us to leave or we would be arrested. A few did leave, but most of us stayed. We were then arrested and our details taken down. Later, we had to come before a magistrate. We did so in small groups rather than as a total group and it depended on the magistrate as to how he or she responded to the sentence and the sentence that he or she chose to impose. For Dell and I and our group, the outcome was a nine months good behaviour bond. There was some legal costs to pay as well. This action was taken as part of my understanding of what mission and discipleship involves. According to the basis of union of the Uniting Church in Australia, God's mission is about the reconciliation and renewal of the whole creation. Concerned action for creation is therefore in line with God's mission. God is not only concerned about humans, but all creatures and all creation. We can have the next slide. I wrote in towards a theology related to mission. Prophetic witness is another aspect of mission. In it, the church points to God's desire for the reconciliation and transformation of the world. Wherever there is violence, brokenness, racism, and injustice, 
the people of God are called to be involved in peacemaking and work for justice. The church is also called to challenge those structures and systems that create or perpetuate brokenness and distortion in communal life. Our current use of fossil fuels is damaging the environment and impacting the climate, such as the more extreme weather events, as seen in the terrible bushfires of last summer in Australia, which killed some 3 billion creatures, and the bushfires in California and other Western states of the USA, which are the worst on record. Human activity is having a detrimental effect on the environment and climate, and we need to do something to change this. We can be part of God's mission in doing so. As a disciple of Jesus Christ and part of his church, I need to take action, including prophetic action if need be, to alert people to the situation and change the way that we do things. In Being and Doing Church, I wrote, a disciple is a learner and follower. Following Jesus means being caught up in his ministry and mission. Just as Jesus taught about, proclaimed and demonstrated and embodied what the kingdom of God was like, so his disciples are called to do the same. In word and deed, by compassionate action and prophetic signs, by whom we are as well as what we do, we are to show something of the reign of God. The break free of fossil fuels protest was an opportunity to join with others in a very public way. Not all Christians, but many were and were involved as part of our discipleship. Discipleship involves following the non-violent way of Jesus, who cared for the least and challenged the powerful, seeking to bring God's reign to bear on earth. We do so guided and empowered by the Spirit. Thank you.